In the UK, most operations are planned weeks in advance. We're okay to go. Yeah. Okay, let's have late, please. But each year, 8,000 patients are so seriously injured. You want to get gowned up? Go, go, go. Red is steady, slide. They need an urgent operation to save their life. You are making very challenging decisions really, really fast. This is like her leg tried to amputate itself. At Adam Brooks Major Trauma Centre in Cambridge. Adam Brooks Reese, that's passion message. 100 trauma specialists and expert surgeons must bring their skills together at a moment's notice. You got my mangled limb for me. It's a bit of a mess. It's going to need quite a lot of very complicated surgery. All right, so you just bear with us. You're doing really well. All under the most intense pressure imaginable. There's quite a lot of force involved. God, man. We're not robots. We're, we're, we're human beings. But you never know when unexpected things can happen. There's no margin for error. His lungs aren't doing well, are they, Svet? No, 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 his lungs are not doing well. Decisions that are made there and then may affect whether someone lives or dies. This is nearly as bad as it gets. From recess. Is she stable enough to yes. carry on? To theatre. Go, 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 go. 20 specialisms combine to save one life. Adam XCD, pass your message. Hello, is Heart Air Ambulance. Free alert for you. Yeah. I've got a 33 year old motorcyclist. He's then been seen to crash his motorcycle into a metal gate. Okay. A man has been involved in a serious motorcycle accident in Ipswich, over 50 miles away. He's got multiple left sided rib fractures with a hyper expanded left side of his chest. Medics have requested an urgent helicopter transfer to Adam Brooks Major Trauma Centre. Can I have an adult trauma to ED resus? Team leader Rishi Rallan leads the response. When the red phone goes, it's probably quite sad, but I get quite excited. It means that there's a patient out there who is unwell, who needs our help. And that's exactly what we're here for. Hello, who are you, sorry? EM doctors. If you want to get gowned up. And um, which bay are we going into? We'll go bay two. A flash team of nine on-call trauma specialists. NCCUs. Yes. From intensive care doctors to neuro and orthopaedic surgeons. Now to try and get yourself ready and in positions, that'd be great. Make their way to resus. With trauma, you are making very challenging decisions really, really fast. Pop your name on your top so I know who you are. The second that patient comes through those doors, they're your responsibility. We've got a 33-year-old motorcyclist who's come off his bike at some speed. Their main concern was a deformed left side of a chest with no air entry there, and they're flying over here. That's all I know at the moment. Any questions? I think they've just arrived. Cool, brilliant, thank you. I need a drink. I need a drink. Hello, sir, are you OK? Drink. The patient, Ben, is in significant pain. I'm can we get the full team in if that's OK? He's been administered ketamine, which stops the brain receiving pain messages and induces a euphoric state. We'll do a sterile handover and then we'll do a primary survey. We've got hands on scoop. Yay. OK, hello, everyone. Hi. This is Ben. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 He was witness to crash his motorbike into a fixed metal gate. Motorcycle accidents bring with them multiple injuries and it's a real challenge to prioritise what injuries could potentially kill the patient. <sighs> James, you guys have to commence primary yeah. survey. Yeah, is clear. Ben, what I'm going to do, mate, is just have a look at you, OK, from top to toe. The primary survey is our first look at a patient who has had significant trauma, just like detective work. You need to go searching for the injuries that could be life-threatening for our patient. The medic's essential for the survey take up positions around Ben. Open your eyes for me. Ooh, six, and reactive. An emergency doctor assesses Ben's airway, breathing and circulation. Two trauma nurses administer pain relief. And an orthopaedic surgeon checks for fractures to Ben's arms and legs. What happened? 
You came off your motorbike. Not again. Oh, oh dear, oh dear. I can't breathe. Oh, I can't breathe. So guys, from an A to E assessment, in summary, we've got clear injuries. Circulatory wise, we're comfortable. From their examination, the team have determined Ben has severe injuries to his chest and lungs. Hey buddy, tell me what your name is. Benjamin Strafford. Benjamin, do you remember anything at all? No. Right, okie dokie. I'm really worried about your chest. The injury yeah. you've got to your chest is significant, so I need to get the scan done as soon as possible, uh, all right? Can you get my phone? And he's got like a baby. She's pregnant. All right, mate. We'll speak to her as well. Ben has had significant trauma, and we are keen to get him to a CT scanner, which may show lots of other injuries that we're not seeing straight away. Uh, he's drunk, man. He's drunk. I'm just pausing, mate. All good to go. Whee! Hello there. Hello, Hello. Oh, OK. You come to CT scanning, all right? Yeah. We're going to take some pictures of your head and your neck and your body. Do what you want. Perfect. OK. Woo! Yeah. Ben, I really need you to keep still yeah. and mostly keep quiet, all right? Yeah. Apart from that left arm, where else is painful? Everywhere. Everywhere, OK. OK, just keep as still as you can now, please. The scan is just about to take. The CT takes a series of images from different angles that create a detailed cross-section of Ben's body. The left side of the chest obviously has significant pathology. It shows one of Ben's lungs has collapsed, meaning with each breath, air is escaping into his chest, putting extra pressure on his other lung and impairing its function. Um, I can't breathe. I just got it. There are some really significant life-threatening injuries going on. The first injury is to the left side of his chest. A collapsed lung can stop him from breathing. All right, so you just bear with us, Ben. You're doing really well. The scan also reveals Ben's femur, the largest and strongest bone in the human body, is badly broken at the point where it meets the hip. Ben has a fracture of the right femur. Every single movement of our lower body is through this bone that will always require an operation. If Ben's injuries are not treated, that could mean that he never walks again. The broken femur will need surgery. But right now, Rishi's priority is Ben's damaged lungs. Voila. At the scene of the accident, medics inserted a chest drain, a tube one centimetre in diameter, inserted between the ribs and into the space around the lungs. The drain is to remove the air that's escaped from Ben's collapsed lung into his chest. Because it looked to me that it was a bit too far in. But it stopped working. Rishi's been advised by a cardiothoracic specialist that Ben needs a second chest drain urgently. We're going to do a chest drain, guys, so everything out, please. So, Ben. Hello, sorry, I thought I didn't snap. It's all right, don't worry. You've had, a, so much pain. you've had a tough day. Your chest injury on your scan report tells me it's quite bad, so we're going to need to put in another chest drain into that left-hand side. Yeah. So we need to give you a fair dose of sedation. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take this drain out, OK? Big breath. In. Because the pre-hospital drain is lodged within the lung itself, Nice, slow, deep breaths. Rishi needs to create a new route into the pleural space, which sits between Ben's lungs and chest wall, where the air is trapped. Okay. Nice trapped here. Yeah. OK, I can feel the lung a bit spender here. I don't think we're actually in there, so I'm going to try that one again. I'm going to pull out. The thing is, because the lung is up against my finger, it makes it ten times harder to get this in. As the previous drain has already released some air around Ben's functioning lung, the pleural space is much narrower, making it harder for Rishi to get the tube in place. 
Putting in a chest drain is a really tough procedure to do. Oh. No, it keeps veering off. This oh. You have to use oh. a degree of force to get through the thick skin and muscle layer, but not too much of that. You might push it too far into the lung itself. Oh. I wonder if it's just in the fatty tissue, if I'm being honest. You have to be quite tacked out, and your judgment, feeling it go through, is really important here. Oh, a challenging procedure. Right, so we're in the tract here. So you can hear there. Yeah. That's definitely air release. And I can feel... I can feel lung against my finger. Okay. okay. Perfect. The chest drain will remain in place for a number of days, while the damaged lung naturally repairs itself. So, yeah. I'm going to get his family in now, so that can go from there. Ben, your mum's coming in. No swearing. Hang on a minute. You alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, I don't know what I'm in pain. I know. Oh, bless you. Oh, mind the bad way? Yeah, well, not, not yeah. good. But not. Well, I'm alright. I'm not going to yeah. die. I'm right. No, you're, no, you're not, not going to die. die. No, you're not going to well, die. Well, you will one day. <laughs> <laughs> not today. <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting another bike, are you? Yeah. No, you're not. Mm. <laughs> mm. Hey, Missy. Hey, oh, she's the other side. Oh. Hello. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, don't oh. die. I always so much pain. I can imagine. I don't know what happened. Ben's injured lung will be weak for some time. I'd be like to go for theatre. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. But he needs an urgent operation on his fractured femur. If it's not fixed quickly, Ben may never walk unaided again. Addenbrooke's major trauma centre covers a population of over six million people, making it one of the biggest in the country. Each year, thousands of critically ill patients must travel from the surrounding counties because their injuries are so severe, only the specialists here can treat them. Adam Brooks, that's passion message. 41 year old female, her car left the A505 three hours ago following an RTC. A driver has crashed off the road at 70 miles an hour. She's got sensory and motor deficit from T4 down. An ambulance is bringing her straight to Adam Brooks. Okay, do you want to go into recess one? As the emergency medics are concerned, she may have a serious spinal injury. Sam, that's a pre-alert. They'll be here in 10 minutes, so I'll put the call out. 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Sam Todd heads the flash team preparing for the patient's arrival. Trauma, ED, reset. And if you be Dr. One for me. Including emergency doctors. Oh, hi. Trauma nurses and anaesthetists. A glut of anaesthetists, Sam. You've always got to come in twos, haven't you? You can't have an odd number. Not knowing everything about a patient before they arrive is difficult. Are you a neurosurgeon or just NCCU? Right. There's going to be things that you need to know that are missing. We've got a 40-year-old lady who's come off the road at speed and it's taken about three hours to find her. Anyone with that serious an injury, let alone them being trapped and not treated for several hours, is going to be in a, in a serious condition. Everyone is ready. On three, one, two, three. The patient, Jazz Vinder, is a single mother of four who was travelling alone. The side impact airbags were deployed, but not the steering wheel airbag. Liam, do you want to jump in and get your primary survey going, please? Mate? The trauma team must work fast. No evidence of any bruising. Emergency doctor Liam Barrett starts his examination. She's got a bit of tenderness and groaning when I'm pressing. Jazz has been pretty seriously injured. She's crashed her car at some speed and stopped very suddenly. And her head's been thrown forwards and then backwards very quickly. And at this point, we don't know if she has a serious spinal injury or what exactly is going on. So she's got a weak radial pulse. Mm -hmm. What's her heart rate? 39. A low heart rate suggests Chasvinder's brain can't send the normal signals down the spinal cord to regulate the heart. So just assess for reflexes. Reflexes are absent. And having no reflexes could be another sign 
of spinal injury. I'm very worried about Giles at this point. I have a suspicion about what's going on, but I don't have enough information to, to give her a diagnosis. It's desperately urgent that she gets CT as quickly as we can. Just Vinda, can't give you a drink at the moment. We're just going to do a CT scan, OK, to have a look, see what sort of injuries you have. On Eva. Push, 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 yeah. Jasvinda is the most critically injured patient in Addenbrooke's. She's given immediate priority for a CT scan. Is it just fine? I'll take well, so she... OK. She's got some cuts and bruises and a bit of bruising around the right eye. Yeah. It's really bad. This patient has completely displaced the neck part of the spine. There. The force of the impact has broken Jasvinda's spine, pushing the vertebrae in her neck so far forward, it severed her spinal cord. One of the most severe spinal cord injuries that I've had and I have seen. To see such a devastating injury, it's quite breathtaking. It, it does take you aback. I think it's clear to the whole team that this is going to be a, a really devastating injury for, for Jazz and her family. Jazz Vinder's injury means she is suffering from a serious form of paralysis. They now need to find out where she still has movement and sensation. Hi, Jens Vinder. Um, I just need to test the different parts of your body so, so whether you can feel them touching you. Emergency doctor Liam needs to perform a full neurological test. So every time I touch you, you have to say yes. Yes. Pinpricking her yes. from head to toe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You feel me? Yes. You feel me there? Can you feel me touching you? Can you feel me touching you there? OK. So she can feel here mm. and up here. She can't feel down okay. here. I'm going to go down the legs as well. If you can't feel it, don't worry. Can you feel me touching you there? Can you squeeze my fingers? Squeeze my fingers. Yep. Could you try and wriggle your toes for me? Toes? Yeah. I can't. You can't, okay, don't worry. So in terms of where she can feel. Yeah. What she can't feel. On her arms, downwards. Okay. Jasvinda has no movement or sensation below the waist, but she still has some in her upper body and arms. This is a critical period. She needs an operation to stop it from getting any worse. Um, I need to tell my kids. Something they have already here. contacted because they're not only kids. Jasvinda, it's Sam, the a &E consultant, but you've got a very serious neck injury. OK, a fracture of the spine near the top of the spine. It is a serious injury, I have to say. Um, we're going to take really good care of you. So your brother-in-law is here. Mm -hmm. um, what would you like me to tell him? Do you like me to tell him what I've just told you? Or would you like me to tell him less or more? As much as possible. As much as possible? OK, you sure? Yeah. Jasvinda now faces an operation that will determine the rest of her life, where surgeons will need to stabilise the fracture in her neck to preserve what sensation and movement she still has. There are some cases that, that will stay with me. The point at which cases become too routine and one becomes too blasé about it is probably when you've perhaps been doing it for a bit too long. Yeah, she's conscious, yeah. 
Life-changing. Yeah, definitely. Jazz is a case I'll remember for, for some time to come. After a night in intensive care, Ben's condition has improved, although his lungs remain fragile. I always thought he was invincible, I really did. Well, he still is, really. But his operation can't be delayed. It's a bit colder down in theatres, so we can get you another blanket if you want. It's not too far to the theatres. This will be high risk, because under general anaesthetic, Ben's injured lungs need to be artificially ventilated, putting them under tremendous stress. He's for fixation of his hip. Main issue is the anaesthetic. He's got a bad chest. In Theatre 20, the 14-strong day team are preparing for Ben's three-hour operation, including an anaesthetist, Svet Petkov. Gosh. He's broken everything, basically. Everything yeah. on the left side of his body. Leading the operation, is orthopedic consultant, Levan Rensberg. You see a fracture of the right hip bone. Cortex is really thick when we're young. You've really got to absorb a lot of energy to break your femur like that. Oh, shit, my leg. That is not too bad. Ben has fractured the top of his femur where it meets the hip. Lee will first need to bring the bones together using x-rays to confirm the femur is realigned correctly and secure them in place with temporary wires before fixing a dynamic hip screw through the bone to bring the fracture together, creating a strong and stable femur. Right, you'll be going off to sleep fairly shortly now. Think of something nice and we'll take good care of you. If you're a trauma surgeon, you like a little bit of uh, uncertainty. You like the unpredictability of trauma, the chaos that comes. So when you're approaching a multiply injured patient and someone's really unwell, there is a, a quickening. You, your heart goes up a few notches. There's a degree of, I guess, nervous energy that you get inside. It's not in a good shape. Not in a good way at all, this chap. This operation, this is a very high risk. One of the most difficult cases uh, I've had to deal for a very long time. This pressure is all over the place. Ben is seriously injured and his lungs are in a bad way. Can you pass my stethoscope from uh, the top? So the longer Ben is on the table, the more likely we are to have difficulties to get sufficient oxygen into his blood and that can result in damage to the vital organs, most importantly his brain. Can you take this? Yeah. Before they start, Ben's left leg is lifted out of the way. Yeah, perfect. While his broken right leg is placed in a movable clamp so it can be manipulated throughout the operation. Yes, thanks. How are we doing this, Fred? Okay? Let's make sure that the drain is now swinging. Yeah, it is swinging. It is swinging. Happy start? Yes. Starting. Lee opens an eight centimeter hole in Ben's thigh. Are so we going to go under Vastus or are we going to go through yeah. Vastus? We're going to go through Vastus. Yeah, I must admit, I must say. And carefully cuts through the Vastus muscle. So there is, put your finger in there. To work his way towards the fracture. You can just about feel that's the fracture zone. Just there. Already, Ben's lungs are struggling. Uh, he uh, hasn't been very well. I mean, his blood pressure has been quite unstable. Uh, his ventilation is quite difficult. OK. For Ben, for walking and running and getting back to his life as quickly as he can and being sure that this bone will heal nicely, I want it to be perfect. But I've also got in the back of my head that his lungs might pay the price of taking too much time. And so how he responds will define whether he survives or dies. Sheila, could you put a bit more traction on? Can you just pull him a little bit more to length? Yeah, it's quite tight, yeah, go. Go, go, go. Feels good, go. The first step is to get the bones aligned so that you fix them in a good position. 
this traction table will allow you to pull it to length and pull it into a nice alignment. Go, go, go. And often by just pulling on the leg, you'll get it in a good shape. Watch out, he'll spring because he's quite tight. His muscles are really tight. Too much, go back, go back. One of the problems when you're young, you've got all these muscles and ligaments around the hip which can make it difficult and then just pulling and pulling and pulling is not going to help. If you undo the middle one and abduct him a little first, Sheila, this one. And so sometimes you have to give it a little bit of a wiggle in the jiggle. Roll, go, go, go. Feels better than four. Flash there, thank you. Lovely. Yeah, you can lock it there. X-rays confirm the bones are aligned. Let's go with the drill. This guard wire to my hand, thanks. So Lee drills the temporary wires through Ben's damaged femur to hold it in place. So now if you can see the x-rays, you'll see how the bones are sort of tethered together with that wire. Flash again. Now you can still see the gap between the fracture. If you can undo the traction, still not closed down at the back, which means his rotation is going to be wrong. Push, push. Lee is struggling to bring the femur together. There's something wrong. Adding time and putting more stress on Ben's lungs. Sheila, external rotate. Go, 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 yes, love it. Flash, thank you. That's better, it's coming all together as one. The bones are now close enough together. Thank you very much. For Lee to install the surgical steel hip screw, which will hold the hip in place as it heals. <clears throat> Mallet, please. But an hour into the surgery, it says there's something. There's a uh... anaesthetist Svet notices the flow of air into Ben's lungs is dangerously low. We are having difficulties achieving breathing with the ventilator and having to use higher pressures to get enough air into Ben's lungs and that can cause further damage to his lungs and damage to his brain. And he could die. Uh, Lee, he's, he's, he's not doing terribly well, so, so, so speedy surgery. Man. Good. Svet is a good anaesthetist. He doesn't normally talk to me much because he just deals with it. So when uh, Sweat steps out and tells me something, that means that, uh, yeah, it's real, that he's worried. Now's the time to get the job done and get him off the table. Yeah, go, go, go. So just been told he's getting a little unwell, so we'll Why start not? wiggling a little. Lee now needs to finish the operation as quickly as possible. Man, he's got good quality bone. Go. Drill, drill. Measure, thanks, Arnold. If you go too fast, you, you can create mistakes and cause problems and then make things worse. So we're, we're in for a stormy ride now. But we're going to have to finish this. Is all right, Svet? No. His ventilation is not very good. The quicker we finish, the better, because we can sit him up and uh, improve his ventilation. It's going to shear ahead, I know it. David, oh, sh Flash, thank you. Yeah. I knew you was going to shoot. Because Ben has young, strong bone, one of four screws that attach the hip screw to the femur has broken. Yeah. But with Ben's lungs deteriorating, Lee decides the fixture is strong enough to continue. Now we will accept less than perfect. It's easy when it's like a jigsaw puzzle and falls into place. Then anyone can do it. The village policeman can be an orthopedic surgeon. But the value, I think, of an orthopedic surgeon is knowing when it's not perfect, is it good enough? And again, thanks. And again, thank you. And again, thank you. This is closing down that little gap. Can you get the screwdriver, thanks? Take it out, take it out. Let's work together. His lungs aren't doing well, are they, Svet? No, 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 his lungs are not doing well. Okay, flash the shaft, thanks. Do, do you check the temperature? 76. It's stressful to be in that situation, and I worry about the patient. Of course, this is a person with a family, with their own life, and their life is in our hands. So it's very important to keep calm. We're closing, Svet. We're on our way out. Start dropping that other leg on the other side. How's he doing? Not well? OK, gas exchange is better, but still not very good. We've got, I'll put pressure dressing on. We're not doing the pressure dressing. It's 
struggling. We need to sit him up. He, he's uh, really, his uh, oxygenation is really poor in this position. Yeah, that lung didn't look good, did it? Careful. With the operation over, they can finally move Ben into a position where there's less pressure on his struggling lungs. Ventilation is much better, much better. It's been a long day. Man, that was a difficult one. The young neck of femur is not the same as an old neck of femur. Totally different, totally different. When the operation's over and the skin's closed, there is a real sense of relief. But if he's a life-threatening injury, a lot depends really now how he goes over the next few days. OK, I think that's us done so far. Still a bit of a walk to go for him. OK. Over 15 hours ago, Jasvinda had an accident that severed her spinal cord, leaving her almost completely paralyzed from the neck down. But she still has some movement and sensation in her upper body and arms. So she needs surgery to repair and stabilize the spine in her neck and help preserve and potentially improve the function she has. In theater 22, a team of eight neurosurgery specialists are preparing for Jasvinda's operation. Now we are ready to start, so we're just gonna drift you off to sleep. Taking on the challenging operation is neurosurgeon Mark Cotter. It's a difficult case. Mm. This operation is critical because it'll maximize our chances of rehabilitation. If I can regain some sort of movement of her upper limbs, including some of the hand function or some of the function in her wrists, that will be a huge difference for her during her lifetime. I think this is nearly as bad as it gets in terms of spinal cord injuries. First, Mark needs to manually move Jasvinda's spine and precisely reposition her neck. Then, through an incision, he must navigate around the carotid artery, which carries blood to the brain, to remove the damaged spinal disc, before replacing it with bone taken from her hip to fill the gap. Finally, to stabilize the vertebrae, a metal plate will be inserted and screwed into place. How many kilos do we have here? That's not very much, is it? Get me more so that we can load up, OK? Jaswinda's case is really quite severe. It's rather unusual to see that degree of dislocation. One part of the spine moved in front of the other part. So the first thing that we will have to do is get the spine aligned again. In order to realign Jaswinda's spine, Mark needs to use traction to pull the vertebrae apart. Yeah, I think you can pin now. It's a kind of clamp that is pinned with bolts to the skull. And with a line at which you then attach weights. We might try with this one, huh? Yeah? It's quite a primitive way of getting to align the spine, but it's one of the most effective ways of doing so. OK, now so I'm going to put another one. By adding more and more weight, Mark is slowly moving Jasvinda's spine. OK. Let's get the X-ray. Okay, let's Taking X-rays to check its position. Yeah, it's moving. Look at the gown. <laughs> X-ray gown. OK. Slightly better. Five plus five plus two. With 12 pounds of weight added, Jasvinda's spine has been moved around two centimeters. I'm going to just do a little bit more. Allowing Mark to realign her vertebrae by manually manipulating her neck. OK, I want you to take an extra whilst I'm holding her. OK, and then we'll see whether this comes down, then we're doing the right thing. If this goes up, then... Applying traction is a delicate balance between 
brutal force and, and precision. You obviously don't want to overextend the neck, so I'm a bit nervous about the outcome, but at the same time, I have to keep my mind utterly focused on what I'm doing. Keep, okay, please stop. Just stop. Okay. Flash. Wow, that's great. Excellent, I'm happy. With the spine realigned, Mark can start the operation to remove the disc damaged in the accident. Right, ready? Okay. When you get a chance, can we have the bipolar on 30? Yeah. He'll be assisted by spinal surgeon, Shomo Mukherjee. Okay, we're starting. Start, okay. starting. Just uh, scratch this there. Access to the neck is not straightforward. The front of the neck is a minefield for important structures that can get damaged. And that's the voice box, the windpipe, the food pipe, uh, and major blood vessels, the carotid arteries. Let's see whether we can feel the carotid there. They will be operating within millimeters of the carotid artery. I think I can feel it on the tip, my fingertip. That carries up to half a liter of blood a minute from the heart to the brain. Look, here it is. Any damage to that vessel can be devastating, not only from uncontrolled blood loss, where we may lose her on table, or injury to the brain, because that blood vessel is taking blood to her brain, and we may give her a devastating stroke. Okay, I feel it. Here. We get very close to the internal carotid because it's a double-edged sword. Ironically, in surgery, sometimes we want to feel things to know that we're not going to damage it. Because if it's lost somewhere in her neck, we may come across it inadvertently. It may surprise us. In surgery, we don't like surprises. OK, so somewhere here, if you run your finger down, I think we should have yeah. This is the broken uh, fracture. Here, this is the fracture. Yeah, I can feel the disruption. Okay. Great, so let's put the retract in. Mark Hummer's scaffolding screws into the two vertebrae to minimize movement during the operation. Right. Let's get the microscope in now. An hour into surgery. OK, good. Have a look. They can begin to remove the three centimeter wide spinal disc crushed by the force of Jasvinder's car crash. I will do the sucking, you will do the... Right, OK. In her spine, there is a disc space in between her sixth and seventh bone. And in her case, the disc space is completely destroyed. So all we want to do is basically free the bone of the remnant disc so that we have a nice surface, huh? And so we're clearing out all the debris that's in the space. Sort of clear out the stuff that's on the bone. Because that's going to get in the way of healing her bones. Just, just here? Yeah, that's superficial, but... Not too far out, of course, huh? Yeah, that's true. OK, I think this is peer there. Mm -hmm. With the disc gone, Shomo must remove a one millimeter thin layer of the vertebrae using a high speed drill that rotates up to 1,000 times a second. Careful, just be very careful. Creating a rough surface for the bone graft to bind to. Don't go too, too much into the bone. Though. This is the vertebral artery, so just, just be very careful. What the drill mustn't do is start drilling into the sixth and seventh bones themselves, because then we'll be destroying the bones she's got. And don't go outside, huh? of course. Yeah, that's it. Have a look. OK, then give me a, a, a ruler, please. We go for a centimeter, and then we can, yeah. To replace the disc, they harvest bone from Jasvinder's pelvis, hammering out a one and a half centimeter thick section that will be shaped to fit. I think we've got a cut here, which is good. And I just need this part of the pelvis, called the iliac crest, is ideal for a bone graft. At least it's a good bone. Yeah. Not only does it heal itself, but it contains stem cells that encourage bone growth so it will naturally fuse to the spine. Solid, man. Solid. Very nice. It's good, thank you. Mark needs to shape the bone so it sits perfectly between the vertebrae. First test. 
It's much too big. I just want to see which orientation we're trying to take. One of the things that you obviously want to do is make sure that this implant fits very well into the area that you've exposed. But we need to probably half it in size, huh? You don't want it to be too big because that can cause pressure on the spinal cord. Okay, let's try again, please. It's still a bit big, but it's getting there. If it's too small, you have to go back and harvest further bone. We'll have a few times until this is fitting well, you see. If you don't angle it the right way, it means it doesn't have the same contact to the adjacent bones. That means it doesn't heal as well. So it always takes a bit of time to fashion it in such a way that it perfectly fits into the space. There's not much compromise here. It's really good shape, isn't it? Lovely shape. OK, that's enough. I think I like it. OK. It's going to be quite solid. Yeah, yeah. So can I have the plate? Finally, Mark attaches a titanium plate to permanently secure the vertebrae. Hammer, please. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. Have we done it? Can I have a look? Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. We'll, we'll accept that. Good, thank you. Just Windek is a mother. She doesn't have a husband. Realizing that she carries the responsibility for children and knowing what's ahead of her. It's going to be tough times. She's got a super long down there. But I do hope that the operation has really given her the best chance to reach a certain level of independence. It's all about adapting to the new circumstances. And just Winder strikes me as a very strong woman with a very positive attitude. And I think that bodes extremely well for the future. Ben has been recovering at Adam Brooks from multiple injuries to his arm and legs and an operation to repair his badly fractured femur. There's a point where I was laying in bed, probably last week, and all these things were running through my mind, like, can I walk again? And I always thought I'd be lucky, but obviously your luck runs out in the end. With his lungs healing and following physiotherapy... Hello, knock knock. Hello. Now? Hi. Today he's going to try and stand for the first time. Let's do that. Yeah, you ready? Big push, big push. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yep. Yeah. And do, don't breathe very, very deeply. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Feeling okay in your head? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yes. So how about if you can now put a little bit more weight onto your legs? That's it. Well done. That's beautiful. Well done. Well done. That was your first stand to a frame. So, yes, we'll stay on the upwards now, hey? Oh, okay. okay. I had the accident a month ago, and it's uh, given me a bit of a different outlook on life. Um, the stuff that's important, you know what I mean? Good. Life's short, and the human body is definitely. Uh, Definitely fragile. You're not superhuman. <laughs> exactly. Time to slow down a bit and get old and <laughs> be happy. You know what I mean? Actually get to being old. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Adelbrook's Medicine Department. We have got a fractured, dislocated ankle, female, 72. Is it an open fracture? Yes, tibia was completely out of line. 
and open fruit skin. With almost 1,400 trauma admissions a year, the team at Addenbrooke's treats some of the most critically ill patients from across the region. You got my mangled limb for me. But even the smallest accident has the potential to be life-changing. My name's Ray and I'm one of the doctors. I'm going to have a quick look at you, all right? Madam. Any pain in the neck at all? No. No. 72-year-old Jill has fallen off the steps of her caravan. Now, if this hurts, sing out, stop us, OK? She has a serious fracture in her tibia. Should we just see how far it goes immediately? Where it meets the ankle. We just thought, just do this from 42 steps of a caravan. The amount of time I hear that, it's one of those things that happens just in a couple of seconds. Yeah. Trauma team leader, Adrian Boyle, is supervising her treatment. Jill we had a little trip just going down the steps from her caravan and she could end up with an amputation. We regularly see people who've suffered just a fall from a standing height and suffer really life-changing injuries. And it does make you realise that there, but for the grace of God, go I, because something like this could happen to any of us. Hello. Is it Jill? Yes. Hi. We've just got a couple of x-rays to do. What happened? We was at the caravan site. You know, so I just arrived. There's two steps going into the door and I just slipped and I just went flying in the air, really. So you just don't imagine these things happening, do you? you when you fall over, you, you don't realise quite what damage you've done to your body. I'm quite an active person. I love walking. I've got an activity watch. It probably says I haven't done anything. <laughs> Let's have a look. It keeps telling me to stand up. <laughs> yeah, time to stand on there. <laughs> it's a joke, isn't it? <laughs> oh, can we look at the image? It's a lot. OK, um, that's a bit of a mess. It's going to need quite a lot of very complicated surgery. So, you're going to need an operation. So this is the first stage in trying to fix this and get you back on your feet. Okay. If Jill is to ever walk normally again, her fracture needs to be repaired urgently. The surgeon tasked with the operation is orthopaedic consultant Jay Rowell. Jill's operation is quite complicated because of where it is. It's quite densely packed with nerves and blood vessels and the fracture is around the back of the ankle, so it's really quite difficult to access. We want to get on with it as soon as possible to reduce her risk of infection long term and to get her back to walking as soon as we can. Jay will approach the fractured tibia through the existing wound, avoiding important blood vessels and nerves. Any damage to these could cause significant loss of movement and sensation in Jill's foot. Finally, he will need to secure the fracture at the back of the tibia and use metal plates to repair the bone where it meets the ankle. You all right? You don't have to look so scared. I think now starting to feel nervous. That was a bad injury, Bordeaux, best for you. Surgery is made even harder because the fracture is so close to the tibial nerve that runs down the leg. The nerves in your feet are an incredibly important thing. Every time you stand, you, your foot sending messages to your brain telling you what to do next. And if you lose that, sometimes you can't feel what you're stepping on. And that might not seem that much of a problem, but if you can't feel what you're stepping on, you don't know whether it's hot, cold, sharp, blunt, and then you get injury. She did all that from the start. Wow. But this is a leg losing injury, right? I mean, this is, this is like her leg tried to amputate itself. Table up, please. Thanks. Go clean sword for us. Just about start. Jay wants to repair Jill's broken tibia through the existing wound, so he doesn't have to disturb more of the surrounding tissue. Well, at the moment, what we're doing is trying to find a safe way to the bone and find our way to a good position to fix. The main pro of using the site of the wound is not causing another injury. I don't want to create a new zone of injury by making a cut somewhere else. But that means his access is limited 
when he tries to reach around the ankle to the fracture. Right here, that's a neurovascular bundle to this side of the foot. So they're quite important. Jay is now operating within millimetres of Jill's tibial nerve. You damage the nerves and can be quite, quite substantial loss of function. Be careful. We avoid damaging those nerves and vessels by just being really gentle and mindful of where they are, gently moving them out of the way to gain your surgical access. A lot of this is kind of blunt teasing dissection with my finger, just separating the tissue layers away rather than using sharper instruments which can sometimes tear things accidentally. Time, time, time goes. It's only when you can get to where you want to be safely that you can do the rest. Jay has managed to avoid the important nerves, but trying to reach and repair the fracture through the existing wound is proving difficult. Space is required in this operation to be able to access what you need to access. And if it gets too tight, it just becomes impossible to do your job. You know, we've got to get instruments in there and metal plates in there and screws and drills. Is it worth extending this down? Might need to extend this a bit. Got a knife, thanks. He has no choice but to make an incision to increase the size of his operating field. We tried. Yeah. Extending that wound, occasionally it can hurt. Occasionally, you, you know, you, your ego takes a little bit of a hit. Um, but it was necessary. And, and getting access is all about doing surgery safely. There we are. Knife again, please. There we go. There's our fracture. We're almost at the point of, like, securing yeah. this, right? Finally, Jay has access to the fracture, where he needs to place metal plates to bring the bones together. But he wants to use as little hardware as possible. There's always a danger in these operations of not putting in enough stability. Your goal is to try and get that joint looking exactly like a, a joint before it was injured. And, and then you want to squeeze that joint together so the bone's got no choice but to heal. And that requires metal. Plate bender. And we kind of want it that way around, I'm imagining. Yeah. But if you put too much, it takes up maybe some of the volume for tendons to glide properly. And also, if you're putting in too much, if it gets infected and it needs a second operation, have you just burnt your bridges for what you might need to do next? So there's this kind of balancing act. Is it looking like it's reducing? Or does it need a bit more Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy? That, that doesn't look so Impulse. bad there, does it? With one plate attached, Jay must use a second plate to fully secure the fracture. I have a 40 mil partially threaded Cancella screw with a washer. You don't want to be caught out by underfixing it. No, no. So uh, we're just bringing that capsule and deltoid ligament around this screw so the screw acts like a giant anchor. <laughs> well, the joint's got great holes. X rays, please, Solomon. Lovely, save that, that is great all the way. It's that. just the viability of it, isn't it? That's the thing, and that's what time will tell. We haven't got an awful lot of prominent metal work there, so I think we're done. Yeah. Jill's not out of the woods yet. Step one's wound healing, and if that wound's healed, we all breathe a sigh of relief. Second side of relief is about rehabilitation and getting range of motion in that ankle, and she's able to walk. Going on from that, when she returns to her activities and her lifestyle, uh, and that's a long process. It's all finished, OK? Just taking you to recovery now. After being discharged from Addenbrooke's, Jill spent several weeks doing physio and recovering at home. She's now back on her feet. The dreaded steps. 
I'd like to sling them down the skip. Anyone want them? They can have them. <laughs> That's the end of those. After weeks of being stuck in one room, and the smell of fresh air was absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Just getting out the front door makes you realise how you take your legs for granted. The farmer's house is that over there, lastly. And the kindness and care that everyone could have possibly given me, they have given. It has been fantastic, really. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I think it makes me feel emotional now. Mm, excuse me. <laughs> it makes you feel very thankful. <laughs> and to get me through these things. I always think of others, so how must it be for other people who can't do this, and how thankful I am. I really am so thankful to the surgeons that they sewed my foot back on. <laughs> Five weeks after her car crash, and the operation to fix her spine. Jasvinda is recovering at Adam Brooks. I'm taking one day at a time. Sometimes a thought comes that I might not be able to do things like I used to, but I refuse to pay attention to those thoughts. Hi, Jasvinda. Hi. Surgeon Mark Cotter comes to check her progress. Show me what you can do with your hands. Huh? Can I have a look? Okay. Mm -hmm. Show me what, can you do the wrist? Yeah, yeah? this is new. That's great, yeah. fantastic. I can uh -huh. do that now, that's new. I was happy to see this. Yeah, that, I think that's really, really important because that gives you the possibility to grab things. Yeah. Um, going forward. So we're making progress. And you seem to be looking at the bright side of life. Yes, I would like to see bright side. Mm, I've got kids waiting at home for me. <laughs> would like to go home to see them. Sure. You have got two options. You can either cry or you can smile. And I've got kids and kids better response to a smile. <laughs> they want their mum at home. With willpower, I'm gonna get better and get home to my kids. I see a lot of patients in difficult situations. And whilst I do what I can for them, there's limits to what's possible at the moment. But science is advancing and that gives me hope. And that's important. Hey, looking. <laughs> because what's life without hope? Next time. I've little option, really, but to go down this road. High risk brain surgery on a patient who's awake. Here we go. One, two. Where the outcome isn't guaranteed. The biggest fear is permanent damage that is irreversible. She's not responding. 